So probably the question that we get asked the most is how do we afford to live like we do? We don't live a lavish life actually. Um, we live in a double wide trailer to be honest, but we live the life that we want to um, and we feel very blessed and fortunate. But there were some sacrifices and there's probably some things that some people could copy and benefit from. Um, we were, we've been super blessed, but um, people ask how we get to live this way. So we figured we'd sit down and make a little video just talking about how we got to where we are with our three mules and our awesome horse. And we're in the mountains in Idaho right now and we feel super fortunate and we hope everyone can live their version of that you know maybe not here in our mountains in Idaho but your own version of it so you want to just dive into kind of where we were when we started when we first met yeah so we kind of got started before we met um, thankfully both of us were on the same journey which is part of the reason we got along really well and I think a big reason like one of the big reasons why we decided to get married so before we met, we both had equines. I had horses since I was nine, my entire life. And when I was about 26, um, just had some life changes. I really wanted to get out of debt. And I ended up selling the last horse I had. We made sure he went to a good home. Did you cry? Sure. Yes. Like I didn't want to have anything to do with loading him in the trailer. And for whatever reason, he would not load in the trailer for him. And so they called me and they're like, will you please come load him in the trailer? And so I had to go there and load him in the trailer and watch him drive away and it was devastating. Don't cry right now. <laughs> I didn't hear any of your voice. Actually, in all seriousness, I, that is a huge sacrifice would be, especially for her. It was for me too, we'll get to that part of the story, but like <clears throat> selling a horse that you truly love, um, to try to get yourself set up is like almost a kind of unimaginable sacrifice for a lot of people. And I don't mean to make light of it. I'm just giving Alyssa a hard time. Um, I'm not crying, you're crying. You no, know, you're crying. Um, but yeah, talk about a big sacrifice, right? Selling your horse, um, yeah, your so passion. We did that and he was kind of in the same boat so he had a horse and he ended up having to give her up for the same reasons it's just it's so expensive especially when you're trying to pay off debt alone like if you guys are in the middle of it you know that even trying to find an extra hundred dollars to put towards paying off a car loan or whatever it is is really tough sometimes and so when you have a horse and you're trying to board it somewhere because you don't own your own house it's like that's really expensive and then you're working so much to try to afford them that you don't even get to spend time with them and like with my horse he was just standing in a stall most of the time and I do my best to get there after work and at least let him out but I really wasn't riding him I didn't have time for him and I was working extra just to pay to have him and it wasn't fair for him um, so that's why I decided to give him up and just be horseless for a while um, but we both, when we met, we both were on Dave Ramsey's plan. He has an awesome, like, debt snowball, um, like, debt payoff plan. He's got all kinds of apps now for budgeting and stuff, and I think that's one of the most important things when you're paying off your debt is budgeting and sticking to it and, um, you know, making those sacrifices, not going out to eat, you know, and, and just, like us, giving up our horses for a, a time. We didn't know how long it was going to be until we got new ones. I thought it was going to be maybe a couple years and that turned into like five years. <laughs> so anyway, so we <clears throat> both followed Dave Ramsey. Thankfully, because of that, neither of us had credit cards or credit card debt, but we did have other debts. Um, and then we ended up meeting. We decided to get married. And when we got married, we made a decision just to go to the courthouse and get married. We didn't have a wedding because we didn't want to spend the money on a wedding. And for our honeymoon, we just went up into the mountains and camped basically was all. So um, extremely cheap and yeah, didn't have really anything into it. But <clears throat> along those lines, like we made a lot of sacrifices, but we made sacrifices that like made sense for us. Yeah. 
like neither one of us wanted a big wedding and no. we chose not to do it because of you know just financial reasons we weren't going to just follow the crowd and have a big wedding because that's what you're supposed to do we we've kind of chosen to make some really tough sacrifices <clears throat> but ones that made sense for the lifestyle that we want to live yeah and we ended up just having a reception up in the mountains with our family like afterwards and it was like everyone bring some food just camp and we'll just hang out together and so it was awesome and it worked great for us um and so we decided to move into a really small apartment um we tried to find basically the cheapest apartment we could without living in a really sketchy part of town and i got a new job that paid better um jason took a job with actually the same business um doing something different so he sacrificed really a whole fall not being able to get any time off like he was working it was the worst like six in the morning until uh, sometimes 10 at night and I was on commission so I could do basically as much work as I wanted so I picked up extra work I also picked up some side hustles and did those on the side and then when I was done with my work I would go over and help him a lot of nights um, and real quick the goal for that like sprint Yes. Was to gain traction and to get just a little bit of slack in our budget because it's super hard to, you know, stay motivated when you're gaining like $5 a month towards your goal. So we were like, let's sprint, let's make some big sacrifices, we'll get after it and we'll gain some momentum. So that was the goal. Like that's not real sustainable for a long time, at least it wasn't for us, no. but it did give us traction and got us moving in the right direction. Gave us some slack, could throw a bunch of money at student loans and things like that. So that was the, the goal. And a good motivation for that was we sat down and we added up all of our debt. Um, student loans, car loans, even what we still owed on our cell phones, like everything. And by the end of it all, it ended up being a little over $85,000 that we owed. <laughs> and so it was crazy. And like looking at that number, adding it up was um, really just kind of not devastating, but it was discouraging for sure. And it was like, okay, we have to do something drastic to try to kind of get this under control so we sold his nice truck um and paid off the rest of it with selling it we i think we sold quite a few things like we basically whatever we didn't use we sold just to gain some extra money and then yeah we worked our butts off um real quick before we get too far past it as far as looking at the number that we owed in total it was super discouraging but it's also super good to know the direction you're going at least yeah. for me like if i'm say climbing a mountain i want to know where the top is especially if i feel discouraged i feel like you know say it's foggy i feel like the top of the mountain is just way up there and out of reach but by looking at those numbers and adding them all up it's like the fog was gone you could see the top of the mountain that you're aiming for and while yes it's a long ways you know how to pace yourself you know how to set yourself up for success you know what direction you need to go so just sitting down adding up all those numbers was terrifying discouraging and 100 percent necessary for me yeah and for me i like to know what you know make a plan and stick to it and so seeing that number written down all added up was helpful because it's like okay this is the number it's what it is now we have to figure out how to pay it off and solve it, you know? And so that's where Dave Ramsey's plan really came in because he attacks like smallest debts to largest debts. So you kind of, it's called the debt snowball for a reason. You start paying off a little bit and pretty soon you're picking up traction and you're able to pay more towards the next one. And so that really worked out well. And it was encouraging to see those smaller debts get paid off. And then we're working towards the bigger ones. And in the last debts that we had, the biggest ones, you're chipping away at those for a long time. And so it's like, you're not really moving, but eventually you break out through the other side and it's incredible. So 
But the, that's the benefit of that debt snowball is as you knock out the smaller ones first, then you have a little bit bigger shovel as you try and knock out the next ones. Then you take that money, roll it into the next biggest, next biggest, and so on. So by the time you do get to those big ones, like for me, it was student loans. Some of them were like, I think, fifteen, twenty thousand yeah. dollars you're like, geez Louise, like, I'm never gonna gain any ground putting an extra 30 bucks a month towards it. But doing the debt snowball really helped us because by the time we got to those big ones, we were putting more like 1,200, 1,500 yeah. a month towards those ones. And then it felt like you're checking off boxes slowly but surely <laughs> gaining ground, climbing that mountain. So um, it was a good program for us. And um, so yeah, another thing we did is when we first, started paying off debt. We moved extremely close to our work. We we're only like 10 minutes away and we ended up carpooling um, quite a bit of the time for, for a while and that helped just save on fuel, you know, and we cooked at home. We didn't go out to eat. We had a very minimal budget and for fun things, if we did get some time off, which was not that often, um, we just enjoy going up into the mountains and so we take the dog up into the mountains or whatever it's free you know other than a little fuel instead of you know going to I don't know a concert or out to eat or whatever else people do most of the time we just go to the mountains even if we have money to spend because <laughs> that's what and we enjoy we're still here <laughs> yeah <laughs> but um so it worked great for us because it's free and that's what we like to do anyway one of the one of the biggest sacrifices for me during that season was I had an awesome, I think it was a 2011 Toyota Tacoma red with nice tires and a grill guard, but it wasn't paid off. And so we were, we had set ourselves up to be in a position where we could carpool. So it was a very sad day, but that Toyota Tacoma is gone now. We sold it yeah. and I mean we did gain a little bit of money but the main thing was not having that monthly payment. Yeah. That was the main goal and then we had a little cash which we could then put towards <clears throat> other loans and other debts and just keep that thing rolling. So that was a big painful sacrifice. I still wish we had that truck right now so yeah. bad. But we don't and we're out of debt and so it's a win. But that was a big sacrifice. What was, what was the big one for you? Um. Well, other than the horse, I think, I think just having to wait longer to get horses again, honestly, was probably the biggest sacrifice. So this time around getting equines, we wanted to have property of our own to keep them on. We wanted to have a fully paid off truck, a fully paid off trailer and really nice facilities. And then obviously the money to actually spend on the horse or mule itself. So it was a long ways down the road um, before we were even going to look at getting equines, so. And real quick along those same lines, when we got married, I think I still had over $40,000 in student loan debt. Um, I don't think we clarified that. Most of the debt was mine when we got married. So it was a big sacrifice for both of us, but especially for her because it wasn't her debt. The Toyota debt wasn't hers. The student loan debt wasn't hers and so it was super like i was super thankful to be in a relationship where it was like all right well we're married now so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come at this like a team we're gonna pick our smallest debt and we're just gonna work our way up together it's not like oh well we'll pay off hers and then we'll pay off mine because mine are bigger it was just line them up and knock them out as a team she worked overtime a lot of times that went towards my debts so it was, and that's the best way to do it. It's like fire hose, baby. Like put all your energy together in one direction and get work done. And I was so thankful for that. And I still am because it set us up for success thus far in life just by those sacrifices early on in our marriage. So I, I just wanted to make that clear. Her sacrificing and not having a horse for literally a couple years longer was because mostly of my student loan debt so yeah i think you know definitely when you get married um we believe in combining finances and you know his debt was my debt at that point and, sucker <laughs> and i didn't think of it as his debt or my debt it was just this is this is the number we have to pay off and so yeah i think 
you have to be a team. Like if one person wants to pay off debt and the other person is still racking up a bunch of money on a credit card or going out and buying, you know, new toys or whatever, it's not going to work. Um, so you have to be on the same page and you have to work as a team. So that's like budget's important, but working as a team and being on the same page is the most important for sure. Yep. Um, so yeah, so our next thing was this is a couple years down the road. We've been Grinding working out for a while. side hustles, like exhausting ourselves. Um, you know, my job was pretty stressful. His job was stressful. Like just trying to make the most of it and keep going with this goal in mind of paying everything off. And we were to the point where we really wanted to purchase our own home. And so we had saved up enough for a down payment. And this is not Dave Ramsey's advice. We saved up enough for a low, um, it was a first time home buyer's loan. So Three and was, a half percent down. Yeah, it was extremely low down payment. So we owed a lot. <laughs> that was gross. I just aimed right at the camera. <laughs> I wonder if you can see her. You, I think you can. <laughs> All right, carry on. So we ended up finding a home that was about an hour from Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and we liked the town. We felt like it was going to appreciate. Um, we had no idea how fast it was going to appreciate, but we bought a extremely cheap for that area fixer upper home, and it was a good location. Um, a lot of big high dollar houses around there, so we definitely bought the low end of the market. Um, we bought in 2020, in March of 2020, like. We didn't even know if we were going to be able to drive in and close on our house just because of COVID. Like things were starting to get weird. And um, at the time, we didn't realize how low the market was. We just, it was the right time for us. It was the right home. So we were able to buy it. Uh, we knew going into it that the septic system was just gone, basically. The whole place was about ready to backflow and we were hoping that we could close and move in before the renter that was in there like did a load of laundry and flushed the toilet too many times and there was just a mess for us to clean up so thankfully that didn't happen we were able to put a new septic system in but that was one of the things that we ended up um, cash flowing and overall I think we ended up putting probably around 15,000, maybe a little more. We ended up remodeling the back room. The washer and dryer were down in this weird basement when we bought the place. We moved those up into this back room and made like a nice laundry room with his uncle's help, which we're so thankful for. And then we built horse facilities. Yeah, so that was kind of the next thing. We got our fence all set up and we had our house. And I think by then we had purchased our truck. We had sold his Tacoma. We had ended up getting a Chevy Duramax to pull the trailer 2007 Chevy yep. Duramax and heard those were really reliable so that's what we got um, at the time I think that was 2018 that we bought that so it was a pretty old truck already but uh, we just heard good things about that year anyway and so yeah real quick so that house buying that house was a huge blessing um, and nothing taken away from that at all because it that's yeah. exactly what it was it was a huge blessing but we did put ourselves in position to receive that blessing with the two years of grinding it out hard work and over time we got our debt to income ratio down we saved up that down payment and we kind of stepped out and we were like all right i think we're at a place where we can buy a home and it wound up being like kind of a financial launching pad by us buying that home and slowly fixing it up doing projects that we were capable of painting landscaping fencing horse facilities and that ended up being just a massive blessing for us that we were in position to receive because of two years of just grinding it out yeah. without even really knowing what was in store yeah. we just kept going and then that was what was in store and then we were able to kind of leverage that blessing into where we are now so we were super fortunate and at the same time it was a lot of you know hard work to get fortunate i guess yeah yeah and we put a lot of work into that place too um the owners previous had done a lot of remodeling on it but it was a half finished 
and when we bought it everything was covered in snow it was like four feet deep of snow and as the snow started melting we realized that there was trash and construction materials buried treasure. literally everywhere yeah as the snow is melting there's like more <laughs> garbage there was garbage bags stashed along the side of the house that the renter i think had thrown out like he was i don't know he had just thrown out the door and there was a snow drift over him and as the snow started melting we realized that there's like a mound of just this garbage alongside the house and mice had gotten into it and stuff so i mean there was definitely a lot of things with that place that we put a lot of just our own like sweat equity into um so when we bought the house i don't even know if we knew of the term live-in flip but what we did what exactly yeah. was a live-in flip and you can look it up especially if you're handy it can be a great way to uh, get into a first home and eventually sell it and make some money um as we lived there and i was driving to jackson a lot i started listening to a lot of bigger pockets podcasts yep. and i was like oh they started talking about live and flip i was like oh that's what we're doing like we're living in it we're fixing it up we're making it livable first and then making it really nice for the next person who wants to buy it yeah and, and our intentions when we bought that place were to resell it at some point um we thought we'd be there longer just because we didn't know how fast it was going to appreciate but um we were there just a little over two years which is the minimum to not pay capital gains when you do sell it and so we we ended up buying that place for 171 um and like i said we put about i don't know 20 we'll say 20. yeah 20 probably into it over two years cash flowing all of that um and so we did, we built like a chicken coop and a nice horse facility and repainted all the outbuildings. And like I said, remodeled, cleaned up the whole property. We tore out all the sagebrush and put in some pasture. And so we did a lot. And then as the market started kind of going crazy in what well, was like 2021, end of, was it even end of 2020? I don't know if it was yet, but yeah, somewhere in there. Somewhere in there. It's like, it started kind of climbing pretty rapidly and we're like, oh wow. And so then we decided, let's try to split our lot. And our plan was... It was a seven and a half acre lot. That yeah. And the city we were living in allowed you to split it down to two and a half acres per lot. So we had enough land we could split it, some with the home and then just a vacant lot in the back with an easement to it. So we went through all that city meetings, you know, meeting with the city planner, um, getting the surveyor out, paying for the surveying. Uh, to do all of that and our plan was to maybe rent out the front house and build a house in the back or build an Airbnb in the back and live in the front house we weren't sure but we just it just gave us more options I'll say real quick along those lines trying to split that lot and create an easement to the back of our property was way out of our comfort zone it was not yes. something that we really knew anything about it was like a lot of google searches a lot of you know calling city planners and um talking to our realtor and it was pretty intimidating it, it was scary to think that we might do something wrong with the easement and it was just way out of our comfort zone but it was something that we're like maybe if we put in the effort try and learn as we go and just take that step forward maybe it'll pay off down the road and so we took one step at a time and started that process and yeah. and in the end we did get a real estate attorney to write up a, a easement agreement so that way there wasn't anything that could go wrong with that and uh yeah and then our every intention was to stay there um build something in the back and then life kind of took a turn um we had some family stuff happen and i have a thought on that we yeah life took a weird turn and there was like yeah a family emergency back in oregon and it kind of put into perspective we had been in years of like grinding and hustling and focusing on like finances and i i think that's super necessary in that stage of life um but then we kind of had that family emergency and it for me at least, and I think for Alyssa too, it really changed our perspective on like, oh wow, like we've been focused on our, getting our finances lined out. Let's, we're fortunate enough now to be able to maybe focus more on spending time with family and spending time doing things that are really enriching 
yeah. to our life. So, um, so yeah, so that was kind of a change in perspective. And then therefore our goals changed a little bit. And so we ended up um, listing our house. We got a little ahead of ourselves. We didn't even talk about getting mules yet. Yeah, so we ended up, um, before we split the property, we ended up getting our equines. We got Clyde first, and then we got Riata. Tell, then, talk, let's talk a little bit about getting Clyde, how, how so, that worked out. So we had our truck, and we needed a trailer, and we were looking at used trailers, and they were so expensive that a brand new one wasn't much more. It was a couple grand more. And so we're like, well, we'll just get a brand new trailer that we know the bearings are good, the tires are good, the floor is good, everything. So we ended up getting just a three horse bumper pull. I don't even know why we picked three, a three horse. I think our plan was to get two mules and a horse eventually, is kind of what we were thinking. So we got a three horse bumper pull and we're on our way driving down to Boise to pick up our trailer uh, from the dealership there. And I am looking on Craigslist for meals. We had gone to a couple sales and we had a very set budget of how much we could spend on our first meal. And we didn't really know who was gonna get the meal first. Like, we just wanted a equine. And uh, we tried to bid on some at some sales, it got outbid. Um, one Nearly week, cried. One, I may have cried. Uh, I couldn't watch horse shows or like horse training shows or anything for a long time just because it made me too sad. Um, but we got outbid, I think by like, Five hundred or seven hundred dollars. So I mean, we were like very strict with our so, budget. So, yeah, what we did with that first one, we got up it. We didn't have our trailer yet. There was yeah. a horse and mule sale in Billings, Montana. And we were living just outside Idaho Falls. So we actually rented a trailer. We had our trailer ordered. It just wasn't quite ready to pick up. So we did have our trailer, just not at our property yet. Just yes. To clarify. So we rented the trailer in March and drove down the icy interstate yes. to Billings, Montana. And beforehand we had looked at the catalog and we had circled all these ones. And uh, we had one named Pandora that was from an outfitter over in Montana. And she just looked awesome. And that was like our one that we wanted. We went there. Yep. She went back in the stalls and petted and we had Pandora. Heard and really good things about those outfitters. Like they were very honest. They had really good mules. So we felt safe buying from them. And uh, yeah, she was really sweet. She like came up to the fence and we were loving on her and stuff. And we're like, oh, this is an awesome mule. She's a big, tall, black Molly mule. And had been there, done that kind of mule. And then yeah, we ended up getting outbid by I think five or seven hundred dollars like and it was really hard not to just keep raising <laughs> your hand <laughs> but we only had so much we could spend and we stuck to it because we wanted to have an emergency fund um, that's another thing we didn't really talk about is we we wanted to build up a good emergency fund and then we wanted to have an emergency fund for when we did get an equine in case they had to go to a vet that we wouldn't be going back into debt um, with that so yeah we set our budget and we had to watch her sell which is sad drove but. back home with an empty trailer just like we drove over there with yep so. but oh well that one wasn't meant to be so then fast forward a little bit yeah so we're gonna go pick up our new trailer and i look on craigslist around the area just to see if there's any mules for sale and uh there was a molly mule listed and they didn't say how old she was or what her height was and so and we're both tall so that's important to us we don't want too short of a mule so i text the people and they go well she's i think she was 11 and she was too short for us and so i was like okay thanks you know for your time and they have they say hey we have a a white um john it's just turning he's going to be turning four here soon and he might be more what you're looking for he's pretty tall and so they're like if you want to come look at him tomorrow like then let us know and they were asking over what we could spend and so i just told them i'm said hey we have a very set budget for a mule this is all we can spend so i'm sorry like thanks for your time and um didn't expect them to lower their price that's not even what i was going for and they said well if you get a, come out and see if you like him and if you get along with him we'll work with you and so we went out and looked at him and i was looking at him for jason actually but and, he was uh, ugly <laughs> he did he looked like a stuffed animal that like a little kid had drug through the dirt and like really loved you know he's all matted and dirty he's had his winter coat we and, got there and i was like 
No, if you are him, you can get him. I, <laughs> I want something a... good looking. As you can tell, she cares a lot less about looks than I do. So. <laughs> and he, uh, he's very awkward because he's, you know, pretty young still and he was growing and and he had it yeah super wooly winter coat and so he hadn't been ridden for months and I got on him in the round pen and just kind of rode him around and I was like yeah he's got potential and um so we decided to buy him and so at the time we that's did, Clyde that's Clyde yeah so we still did, ugly. <laughs> <laughs> just still kidding. ugly he he has filled out so much he looks way better than he did he looks way better and more mature. all jokes aside he looks good yeah he just turned six now so um but we didn't have our, our fence set up yet at our place. And so I was like, hey, we'll, we'll buy him as long as you guys are okay holding him for like two months, you know. And so we put a down payment on him and went home and tried to put our shelter, the rest of our shelter together and put our fence together so we could get Clyde. So that was pretty exciting. That was exciting. So that, that was, was a huge day. moment. And that was... I guess that was 2020 as well. So we'd bought our place, got a truck and trailer, built the fence, and then um, got him in May. Yep. So. May the 4th, we yep. picked up Clyde. Yep. That was a fun day, driving over to Boise with our trailer, knowing that we were finally gonna have a horse or mule at home. Um, at our own home, it was just a huge blessing and really rewarding. Yeah you know, all that hard work and sacrifice was starting to pay off. So that was a, that was a great day. That was awesome. So then we had Clyde, we got him in May and we, we were looking for a mule for me. At that point we were 90% sure I was going to get a mule and not a horse. But you know, if the right horse came up, that seemed really good. We were going to go with the horse, but, um, so we were, looking on there's a classified it's called ksl and we were looking on craigslist and we were i don't know we we're looking everywhere for a mule for me and one popped up on ksl and it was down in salt lake utah and and he his dream mule is a buckskin a zebra dun you know with the i mean riata is his dream mule yeah and, so when she popped up, he was at work and he, I think you sent it to me. And yeah, I think so. It was, it was a real grainy picture of some like unkept mule with like, she hadn't been groomed. She had a long mane and it was all kind of flopped over to the side, but she, you could tell she was built really well and she had really flashy color, which I was like, if I'm going to spend all this money on a mule and all this time with a mule, I want it to be a good looking mule. And so that was actually important to me. I, they she, say color isn't supposed to be important, but I'm like, geez, if I'm going to spend 30 years with this mule, I want it to look nice. <laughs> and uh, she ended up not being very expensive. And there's a reason for that. Um, yeah, her feet were really long in the photo, and we were kind of like, man, I wonder what this thing is. But had a good feeling about her overall. Yep, so we ended up going down and uh, basically just took her home. We didn't even try her out we we got there she was tied up to the trailer already yep and you, you could tell she was pretty flighty and tight and from what they told us she's hard to catch they had to put her on like a tilt table to shoe her um what else couldn't pack meat didn't cross creeks yeah <laughs> uh she had just... to have a pretty long shank to get her to stop on her bit you know like she and um yeah so we brought her home. <laughs> we, yeah, we got there and she was tied to the trailer, uh, but she looked sound and she definitely was tight, but we were like, well, let's see how this goes. We were hoping we could even, you know, reach up, untie her and yeah. get her into our trailer without her running away from us. We didn't even know, but it was like, yeah. let's get her home and then we'll kind of see what, and what she, she is. she jumped right in our trailer and I, you know, and sometimes she doesn't want to load up right away. Um, but man, she just bailed into our trailer. It was, she was kind of like, I'm going with you. Hopped right in <laughs> yeah, there. So, so we were like, all right. And drove her back home to yeah. Idaho and started working with her. And long story short, she's way better than we expected. She does really good under saddle. She's starting to trust us a lot and yeah. she's enjoying her life. And 
she's not too jumpy anymore her personality starting to show she's kind of a little bit shy but also a little bit goofy and likes attention and so she'll kind of walk up to you kind of timid and be like will you scratch my ears a little bit please you know and, and that, uh and that being said we ha we've had her for over two years now and have put a lot of time a lot of time and a lot of miles yeah. on her and it took a long time at first to get her to where she didn't think we we're gonna i don't know do whatever to her um just being able to go out and catch her was a big deal when that finally started happening so <laughs> yeah there was one time where jason was working and the farriers waiting for me and she wanted nothing to do with it and i just remember being like sorry <laughs> you know <laughs> we finally got her caught but i mean it used to be used to be a pain sometimes so but in like overall riata is just another one of those huge blessings that we yeah. kind of took a leap of faith and she's perfect for me she's the exact mule i wanted and um I, she'll be as good a mule as i can make her and i'm i'm not a great horseman by any means but um she has a ton of potential and she tries really hard and she's great in the mountains so that was just another huge blessing yeah so um and then timber found our way to us and those were the three we had um for a couple of years mm -hmm. cedar's fairly new but so yeah so back to our story of the house and paying off our debt um so we had our mules, we had our house, we were we were very content there. Um, you know, there were some things we didn't love about the location and, and you know, things like that. Jason ended up getting a job at the Jackson Hole Airport, so his commute was, what, an hour and 20? Yeah, or an hour and 50 in the winter. Yeah. So it was a long drive. Got to listen to a lot of really Twice good... Twice a day, that's, that's one way. Yeah. Um, and yep. then my job, thankfully, we kind of negotiated so I could work from home. Um, and so I was doing that most of the time, but when I did have to go back in, like for a full year, I drove in to my job as well. And that was right around an hour and 20 minutes as well. And during the winter, that drive is awful. So um, we both, yeah, sacrificed with that. And, but to keep those higher paying jobs and um, keep paying off, you know, everything and and being able to cash flow our fixes on that new property so um and then in 2022 we ended up selling our place and uh let's talk a little bit about how we like bought our the other leap of faith yeah so we knew we wanted to sell our 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 current home our fixer upper the to leverage that into being able to spend more time doing what we enjoy, spending more time with our family who's in Oregon. We're like, all right, let's 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 try and make another big move here and make another leap of faith yep. to kind of live the lifestyle and prioritize the things that we wanted to prioritize. But the housing market was going crazy at that point. Um, and interest rates were starting to raise. And it was so hard to find a house to live in and with the mules and everything like that um just going and renting some place is not a great option plus rent was crazy expensive and where we wanted to move to there was really no places for rent there's not very many rentals so um it's not a very big area so we ended up finding a place actually while he was back in oregon with his family and um he sent it to me and and as soon as i saw it i was like yeah that's the one and so thankfully, because we had paid off all of our debts and were making a good income at the time, we were able to get a secondary home loan. Um, and so we with a, we did a 25% down on that one. And we purchased that home before we sold our other home. And we were still living at our other home, so we basically just bought this vacation home is what yeah, it was. Yeah, it was like a vacation home loan and... Yep, and uh, you know, and we we were very clear with the lending company, like this is what we want to do, and so they helped walk us through the options, so we didn't keep anything from them. They knew we you know, were planning to move into that one as soon as we sold our house, so um, so it was all out in the open, but we ended up um, staying at our fixer-upper until we sold it, and so but because we both had good jobs and we had paid off our debt, we were able to pay both mortgages and actually had a little money left over every month 
um, at the time we were trying to start investing into our retirement account as well. And so we were hoping we didn't have to go through a winter doing that. Um, it was pretty stressful. It we, was, yeah. We bought our house in July and we ended up selling our other house in November. Yep. And so that doesn't sound like very long, but it felt like a long time when yep. we were trying to sell that house while we were paying two mortgages. Winter was coming. Real estate really slows down in the winter. It was a pretty stressful four months or whatever that is. Um, but we're like, and we felt like it was the right thing to do. Yeah, just a lot going on, like we said, with, with family and stuff too, added to that. And thinking about having to make those commutes over another winter was like, oh gosh, mm -hmm. like, <laughs> please no. Yep. But uh, we were going to if we had to. And so, yeah, thankfully in November, our fixer upper house sold and um, the property did not, the, the back lot, we still owned that, but we were able to move to our new home and uh yeah so that's when and right when i got clyde i started our instagram page um as just a way to journal like because this was a huge deal for us getting equines again and i just wanted to kind of like keep a journal of you know training these mules like clyde was just green broke when we got him riata had definitely some issues and so we just wanted to kind of watch their progress share it with our family that kind of thing so that's all our instagram page was and uh, by the time we started, we moved to our new home, it had, it had kind of started taking off. And we had a couple people talking to us about sponsorships. And uh, we started thinking, you know, if, if we really want to make a go at this, this might be the time to do so. And so that's kind of when we put more effort into our Instagram and, and thought about starting YouTube at the time. We hadn't yet because we didn't have a good camera or anything that was kind of the next deal but um that's when we started really putting some thought into maybe being able to do this full time yep so yeah so as far as like specifics as far as financially like we said this was a huge outsized blessing and we're very thankful for it and we hope we can leverage that blessing into you know well we're hoping we can make the most of that blessing and live the lifestyle we want and be able to, you know, provide other people with hope and, you know, yep. uh, just a story of our success. So anyways. So when we sold our house, um, we ended up profiting about 215000 after all of the fees. Um, and so then it became like, what do, what's the smartest thing to do with this money? And so we were able to, at the time we were both, well, I was, I was still at my job I'd had, now working remotely from our new place. And that was slowly kind of going downhill and just getting really stressful. And I knew that I wanted to quit doing that um, sometime soon. And so we looked at our money and we knew we wanted to invest for retirement. So we did that um, with a pretty good chunk of it and then kind of set ourselves up for the future what we did just as far as like what our game plan was yeah. was we maxed out our Roth IRAs Two for 22 in, mm -hmm. in December so like December of 2022 right after we sold our house and then we maxed them out again the next year in January of 2023 so we maxed out our Roth for those two years and we'll actually have enough set aside to definitely do that again yep. this coming January of 2024. So we started off by maxing out our Roths and you can look into those. They're in my opinion, a good product, but I am not a financial advisor. So, um, and then we also just put some in a brokerage account that is not tax advantaged, um, but it is growing and it is in the stock market and it will also shrink sometimes but hopefully yeah. more growing than shrinking in the long run so that was kind of our tactic was like put aside a big enough chunk that if the stock market continues the way it has always in the past when we're 65 we'll have enough to live off of yeah. so we just put a big chunk in there a bunch in roths the rest in a general taxable brokerage account and the plan is to just leave that in there oh and we bought a little 
half acre property yeah, that exactly. has a really pretty view. Oh, sorry. No, yeah. Stole our thunder. <laughs> so yeah, so we we talked about what we wanted to do with our money and we knew we wanted to reinvest some of that into real estate. Um, and Diversify. so we were kind of thinking of maybe doing like a rental, like another fix and flip. And the other thing is this new home that we purchased is in a much cheaper place to live. Um, it was like a, a cheaper place overall. We didn't, we didn't end up buying more home. We actually bought about the same amount of home um, with better property though for the mules. And we felt like it had a lot of potential again for us to put in some sweat equity and have it appreciate over the years. So to, um, to folks from the outside looking in, it looked like a downgrade from our previous house. For sure. It and, went people, from, <laughs> and people even asked like, oh, is everything okay? Like, because it looked like we had sold our like now pretty nice house uh and yeah and went back into a fixer upper and so people were kind of wondering if we were like <laughs> something was going on but but we did that very purpose yeah it was intentional and yeah. uh, intentionality is a theme that runs yeah. through this spend money on things on purpose not just because everyone else does but yeah we downgraded from seven and a half acres to two and a half acres but our two and a half is irrigated we downgraded from a stick built house to a double wide which you know is a little bit painful but yeah. it's perfect like we don't spend much time in our house and uh it's remodeled and nice and bright in there and it's like it's perfect for us so it was a great way for us to again leverage the lifestyle that we want to live you know make a sacrifice that wasn't a big sacrifice for us and it put us ahead financially yes and so we invested in that house in a way um i don't know how long we'll be there right now i think we'll probably stay there for quite a while as much um, as we're working on it we better stay there a while yeah so we don't really have any plans to move from that place anytime soon um so at this point we still had our our lot for sale from what we had divided off of the house we originally bought and that thing sat over the winter hadn't sold but in the meantime we still had put some money away to invest in a another real estate deal so we were trying to decide if we wanted to buy maybe a little fixer-upper house to rent out and there just wasn't really anything available and so we ended up finding a lot for sale um, offered on it and it had already gone under contract and so it was in a weird little subdivision that's kind of out in the middle of nowhere um, has beautiful mountain views and we felt like would be a great place for Airbnb and so what we ended up doing is Jason wrote, hand wrote, I think 16 or yeah. maybe more um, letters to all the owners of these lots that had no buildings on them. Um, yeah, they were just vacant lots just with vacant really pretty lots. views. Yeah, that are all sagebrush, like you can tell no one's been there. And we had two people call us back out of those folks. And one was a really nice old man and and uh but he was going to leave it to his family so he didn't want to sell and the other person that called us was interested in selling and so we ended up um buying the lot in cash from him and got a a good deal on it um and this one was even better than the one that had sold because it was closer to power closer to the main road which they kept plowed at least this last winter and uh yeah better i think better views and everything mm -hmm. so so another blessing. Yep. So that one is just sitting there for now. Um, but our plan is to build like a horse friendly Airbnb. And uh, so that'll be coming up here. We'll probably start on that next summer. But um, we needed to wait for our lot to sell in order, our other lot that we still owned, to sell in, in order to put um, like a cabin and stuff like that on the new property. So um, thankfully here just this summer, uh, our lot did sell. So now we can decide what to do with that and make a game plan with yeah what we're going to do to move forward on our little property closer to where we live now yep so i guess what are some good takeaways from our story that would be useful for other folks for me yeah. well and a lot of people are wondering like what how we how we live so 
we still work. Um, I just am not, I quit my job, which is awesome. He quit his job, which is awesome. So um, I still work, I just own my own business and then now we're just kind of making a, a go at the whole YouTube thing. And um, so, so subscribe, subscribe. <laughs> that really helps us out. Um, yeah, and you know, we're learning as we go. We, we knew nothing about this content creation lifestyle uh, here just six months ago. And so we're really trying to learn and, and uh, yeah, figure out what you guys like to see. And, and that's the most important to us is that you're entertained and that you, you know, enjoy our videos. So, um, but that being said, we do have money set aside to live off of. Um, and so that's kind of our nest egg. Here's what we have. And once that's gone, we need to either get nine to five jobs again or um, figure out something else so hopefully it won't come to that but it might it definitely might so as um, of now it's july and we have about 18 months of expenses set aside yeah. for a runway to try and start you know this business of yeah. you know working with the mules and sharing content about the mules yeah. and hopefully partnering with brands in the future and we're making a little bit now off of all of this um but it's not enough to live off of yet so we're excited to see if it grows into that for sure but at this point it's not enough to live off of so squirrel um, could live off of it yeah our little that's dog about here. it <laughs> but yeah so you know it's uh it's great because we get to make our own schedule and it's enjoyable but it is work you know you you think of at least i used to think of youtubers as being like lazy college kids still living at home and not getting real jobs and uh it's so much work like I have way more respect for them now to try to film everything and edit everything and just and be consistent with it all it's it's a full-time job so I feel bad for ever judging all you youtubers I apologize <laughs> and it is also a leap of faith again yes. another one of like stepping like putting ourselves in a position to step out in faith and we're just you know hoping that hoping that it works out and trying to put ourselves in a position to where it will work out and time will tell. So we got, you know, 18 months to figure it out and put in the effort and see what happens. Yeah. So I, but I do think it would be helpful to give some like tips that, you know, maybe would be helpful to other people, even though like no one's story is the exact same. No. And, and, and there's a lot of people that don't want, what we have right now you know yeah but maybe you want to be able to go surf and do youtube videos on that or maybe you just want to be able to pay off debt so you can retire or whatever it is or maybe you just want to pay off debt so you can spend a little more time um, away from work with your equine or with your kids or whatever it is so um, whatever your goal is i think that's the number one for us that's really what moved the needle was just being debt free and having that extra every month to then save up for a down payment or save up to invest in our retirement or whatever it ended up being. So. Yeah, if you're not putting that money every month towards different debts, then you can put it towards building the life that you want. Yep. So I think for me, the first thing that's like something everyone can do that is super beneficial is to pay attention. Like yes. pull back the curtain, like see where you're at, where you're starting from. If there's debts, you're not sure how much you owe, find out, write it down, make a list and then pay attention. And along those same lines, pay attention to what you're spending money on every month because uh, you're probably leaking money to things that aren't important to you. Yeah. So and it's scary. Like when you first add up, like the first couple months of your budget, don't even budget, just keep track of what you spend and you'll be surprised like I don't know how much we were spending on eating out but it was crazy and like just groceries alone and there was other things too and we're like oh my gosh we spend this much on fuel like okay well we can cut that back some I mean you have to get to work so but uh yeah it's like once you realize what you're spending it on then you can make a budget and figure out what you want to cut back on and the budget adjusts as, you know, like our lives are very seasonal. Um, in the winter, we don't do as much as we do in the fall. And so there was times where we adjusted our budget for that. And, um, but 
yeah <laughs> it's crazy when you add up what you're actually spending it's sometimes it's eye-opening for sure definitely so probably the next thing is like once you're paying attention and living with intention it's like you grind it out and create some slack where you have like a little bit of surplus and at the start it will be just a little bit but then use that extra slack in your budget for something positive or that moves the needle even farther to where you can have even more slack so i don't really know like a good example of what we used that slack for well we used it to build an emergency fund um oh yeah first because that was something that was really important to me. I definitely have like a scarcity mindset and so not having that emergency fund in place was stressful for me because I didn't want to move back into debt. Like what if our car broke down? Then do we have to use a credit card to pay for that? You know, that kind of thing. So I wanted to know that we had that cash on hand to pay for those kinds of things. And that really helped me to, to feel better about really everything. Um, so for me that was what I would suggest using it for first. Yeah, especially you, at first, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, it's like don't make some slack and then go out and buy a bunch of new clothes because that's not gonna advance you in uh, you know, paying off the rest of it and in building a better future for yourself. It's, you definitely have to sacrifice and it's only a season. That's another thing you have to remember is it seems daunting at first and you're like, geez, that's a lot and I wanna go have fun. But you know, for us it was a little bit longer just because we did purchase a house and fix it up and our debt was a good amount so so it took us a little longer but maybe you only have you know ten thousand dollars in debt or whatever it's not going to take you nearly as long you know so yep just know it's a season and and just try to put your head down and work hard and pretty soon you'll be going through the other side and feel amazing yep and that and one last thing is like our journey, we had a lot more blessings than speed bumps. And some people will encounter more speed bumps than yes. blessings at first. But the only thing that you can do is keep moving forward. Even if you get knocked back a little bit, your next step should be forward, back on track. Keep moving that needle and you'll gain some traction and it will improve. And I will say like when you're first paying off your debt, everything feels like a speed bump, like an unexpected $15 bill. You're like, ah, oh, geez, or your car breaks down and it's $200 to fix. That seems like the end of the world. At least it did to us. Yes. And once you start paying off your debt and you get a little slack pretty soon, you're like, oh, well, we have to get the front end rebuilt on our truck and it's $1,600. But that no longer even really felt like a speed bump. That was just an annoyance at that point. And so, um, you know, we had like speed bumps along the way, but because they happened later in our journey, they really, it didn't matter as much. So yeah, there's no way to describe how it feels on the other side. Now we gotta figure out how to make this work, but. Yep. So now we're gonna, get packed up and we're going to go ride up to a uh, high country lake we're going to take the yeah. mules up there today and have a good day so thank you for watching and uh hopefully we, it helped someone i hope so and I, yeah reach out on instagram messages yeah. leave a comment on youtube like anything we'd love to help because like i said we've been so fortunate in our journey and we've learned a lot on along the way and we'd love to share it so like yep. probably better honestly than leaving a youtube comment would be to reach out via message on instagram we try to keep up on those and then we can get more specific if anyone has any questions or anything like that we'd love to help yeah and we're just at mountain belt mules at instagram so we'll put it on on the screen here for you but but yeah we'd love to answer any questions or you know we definitely aren't uh, licensed to give any financial advice so we'll but we love talking about goals and lifestyle and what worked yeah. for us so awesome let's go ride